Rajendranandana Shama Rajendranandana Shama Rajendranandana Shama Rajendranandana Shama Utana Gatana Kaita Bashatana Jaya Dasarati Rama Utana Gatana Kaita Ya shoda do la la go vinda go pala vrinda vana puranda hara Ya shoda do la la go vinda go pala Vrindavana Purandhara Gopi Priya Janna Radhika Ramana Uvana Sundara Bhora Gopi Priya Janna Radhika Ramana Bhuvana Sundara Bhora Gopi Priya Janna Radhika Ramana Ravana Thakura Makana Thakura Gopi Jana Vashrahari Ravana Thakura Makana Thakura Gopi Jana Vashrahari Rajera Rakala Gopa Vrindapalo Chitta Hari Vamsida Hari Rajera Rakala Gopa Vrindapalo Chitta Hari Vamsida Hari Yogendra Bandana Srinanda Nandana Rajajana Bhaya Hari Yogendra Bandana Srinanda Nandana Rajajana Bhaya Hari Yogendra Bandana Srinanda Nandana Rajajana Bhaya Hari Yogendra Bandana Nabina Nirada Rupa Manohara Mohana Vamsi Bihari Nabina Nirada Rupa Manohara Mohana Vamsi Bihari Nabina Nirada 
Rupa Mano Hara Moana Vam Tibi Hari Yashodhanandana Kamsa Nishudhana Nikonjala Savilasi Yashodhanandana Kamsa Nishudhana Nikonjala Savilasi Yashodhanandana Kamsa Nishudhana Nikonjara Sabila Hasi Yasodana Kamsa Rasa Parayana Brinda Vipina Nivasi Adamba Kananda Rasa Parayana Brinda Vipina Nivasi Adamba Kananda Rasa Parayana Ananda Vardana Premani Kishana Pula Sharayo Jakakahana Ananda Vardana Premani Ananda Vardhana Premani Kishana Pula Shareyo Jakakahama Ananda Vardhana Premani Pangana Gana Chita Binodana Samasta Guna Gana Tama Pangana Gana Chita Binodana Samasta Guna Gana Tama Pangana Gana Chita Binodana Samasta Guna Gana Dhamma Soma Gana Gana Chita Samasta Guna Gana Dhamma Yamuna Jeevana Kili Parayana Manasa Chandra Chakohara Yamuna Jeevana Kili Parayana Manasa Chandra Chakohara Yamuna Jeevana Kili Parayana Manasa Chandra Chakohara Namashudara Skoa Krishna Yashrako Vachana Manna Mohora Namashudara Sarakao Krishna Yashrako Vachana Manna Mohora Namashudara Skoa Krishna Yashrako Rako Vachana Mana Mora Nama Sudha Rasa Kao Krishna Jaksha Rako Vachana Mana Mora Viva Vari Shesha Haloka Pravesha Nidra Chari Uta Jeeva Viva Vari Shesha Haloka Pravesha Nidra Chari Uta Jeeva Bolo Hari Hari Mukunda Murari 
ರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹಯ ಗ್ರೀವಾಯ ಗೋರ್ ಹರಿ ಬೋ ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಬೋ ನಿತ್ಯ ಗೋರ್ ಹರಿ ಬೋ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಸುದೇವಾಯ ವಸುದೇವಾಯಿ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ವ್ಯಾಸ ಜಯ ಮುಧೀರಯಸ್ತ್ರಯು ಅಭದ್ರೇಶು ನಿತ್ಯಗವತ ಸೇವಯ ಭಗವತಿ ಉತ್ತಮ ಶ್ಲೋಕೆ ಭಕ್ತಿರ್ಭವತಿ ನೈಷ್ಟಿ ವೀಡಿಂಗ್ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತ ಕ್ಯಾಂಟ್ ಅಲೆವೆನ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಪ್ರೋಸೆಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದೀತಿ ವರ್ಷಿಪ್ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ ನಂಬರ್ ನೈನ್ ಸ್ತಂದಿಲೆ ಅಗ್ನೌವಾ ವಪ್ಸು ಹೃದಿಧ್ವಜ ದ್ರವ್ಯೇನ ಭಕ್ತಿಯುಕ್ತ ಅರ್ಚತ್ ಸ್ವಗುರ ಸೂರ್ಯೇವಸುರಜಿಧ್ವಜ ಸೂರ್ಯೇವಸುರಜಿಧ್ವಜ ದ್ರವ್ಯೇನ ಭಕ್ತಿಯುಕ್ತ ರಚತ್ ದ್ರವ್ಯೇನ ಭಕ್ತಿಯುಕ್ತ ರಚತ್ ಸ್ವಗುರು ಮಂ ಅಮಾಯ ಸ್ವಗುರು ಮಂ ಅಮಾಯ ಆಚಾಯ ಸೂರ್ಯೇವಸುರಜಿಧ್ವಜ ದ್ರವ್ಯೇನ ಭಕ್ತಿಯುಕ್ತ ರಚತ್ ಸ್ವಗುರು ಮಂ ಅಮಾಯ ಅತ್ 
Achayam Standilik Nova Achayam Standilik Nova Surye Vap Suriditvija Surye Vap Suriditvija Dravye Na Bhakti Yuktor Chet Dravye Na Bhakti Yuktor Chet Swagurum Am Amayaya Swagurum Am Amayaya Anybody else want to chant? Archayam Archayam within the deity form within the deity form stand oh, where's the translator who's translating who's doing the Cantonese you did it organized hmm? Hmm? huh want to do it can <laughs> okay. Sandile Sandile in the earth. In the earth. Agno Agno in fire. In fire. Va Va or or Surye Surye in the sun. In the sun. Va Va or or Apsu Apsu in water. In water. Ridhi Ridhi in the heart. In the heart. Dvija Dvija the Brahmana. The Brahmana. Dravyena Dravyena by various paraphernalia. By various paraphernalia. Bhakti Yukta Bhakti Yukta endowed with devotion. Endowed with devotion. Archet, Archet, he should worship. He should worship. Swagurum, Swagurum, his worshipable Lord. His worshipable Lord. Mum, Mum, me, me. Amayaya, Amayaya, without any deception. Without any deception. Translation. A twice-born person should worship me, his worshipable Lord, without duplicity, offering appropriate paraphernalia in loving devotion to my deity form, or to a form of me appearing upon the ground, in fire, in the sun, in water, or within the worshipper, worshipper's own heart. There's no purport. I'll go on to the next verse, text number 10. The next, like, seven or eight more, actually, is not purport. Oh. Just to, to so will we just read? Oh. Yeah, text number 10. One should first purify his body by cleansing his teeth with, and bathing. Then one should perform 
a second cleansing by smearing the body with earth and chanting both Vedic and Tantric mantras. Again, in text number 11, continue. Fixing the mind on me, one should worship me by his various prescribed duties, such as chanting the Gayatri Mantra at the, at the three uh, junctures of the day. Such, such, uh, such performances are enjoined by the Vedas and purify the worshipper of reactions to fruitive activities. Going ahead, text number 12. The deity form of the Lord is said to appear in eight varieties, stone, wood, metal, earth, paint, sand, the mind, or jewels. Purport. Srila Jiva Goswami explains that certain deity forms, such as those made of sand, are manifested for a brief time to fulfill a permanent desire of the worshipper. To, to fulfill a personal desire of the worshipper. Those, however, who desire to attain pure love of God should worship the permanent form of the deity, made, for instance, of marble, gold, or brass, and they should maintain continual worship. In Krishna consciousness there is no scope for neglecting the worship of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Bandeham Shri Guru Shri Yatapadakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahajana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajevam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahajana Lalita Shri Vishakanitamscha Hey Krishna Karana Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sate Devi Pranamai Hari Priye Vancha Kaupatarubhyasya Kripa Vindu Vaivacha Patitanam Pavanibhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Atvaita Kadaha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare 
हरे रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे हरे सो लॉर्ड कृष्णा इज इंस्ट्रक्टिंग उदवा इन द प्रोसेस ऑफ वर्शिपिंग द डेटी Previously, he was describing about the importance of association. What things are good? What's good for association, and what's not good for association? So now, in this chapter, he's describing how to associate with the deities. If you associate with the deity, that's very good association. You cannot have better association. Than to be with the deities, so we have to understand there are rules and regulations in the process of deity worship. It is not just whimsical. It is not just do what you like and just do when you like. But there's many uh, rules and regulations which have to be followed. Of course, people. Sometimes complain. Oh, so many rules. Oh, why can't we just do as we like? We have to understand that the more civilized society becomes, then the more there are rules and regulations. For example, there are no rules and regulations for the animals. We don't have rules for the cats or the mice or the rats. Or all the other creatures who are roaming around here in Hong Kong, the rules, the laws are for the human beings. Humans are meant to follow laws, and the more civilized society becomes, the more there are rules and regulations. So these rules and regulations are for the the good of the society, and similarly worshiping the deity. There are rules and regulations which are very important, which have to be followed. Otherwise, you can't expect the deity to remain there in that presence. So you can see, for example, in the Bhagavad Gita, the, there's a well-known verse in the ninth chapter where Lord Krishna says, "Patram pushpam palam toyam." Yo me bhaktiya prayachati. Lord Krishna is saying, "Offer to me with love and devotion a leaf, a flower, a fruit, or some water. If you offer with love and devotion, then I will accept it." So the acharyas, particularly Baladeva Vidya Bhusan, who was our prominent commentator on the shastras, he wrote the commentary on Vedanta Sutra. Uh, he explains that in this verse, Lord Krishna is indicating the importance of cleanliness and purity. That if we're going to worship the deity, we must be clean. We must be pure. So we do have some restrictions about who can worship the deity. Sometimes people complain that. Oh, why only the Brahmins get to do these things? Why you have to be a Brahmin before you can do it? Everyone should be allowed to do it. But it, you have to understand that there are rules and regulations. There are qualifications before you can approach the deity. <coughs> Some water. So these rules and regulations are there to show us that there's a standard in performing the worship. Just like if you were to uh, look at the, for example, the the secretary of Hong Kong. What the the Home Secretary is it? They call him, what do they call him? The, the the one overseeing Hong Kong. Chief Executive, the Chief Executive of Hong Kong, you know he will have his servant, he will have his secretary, and so on. But these people will be—they will not be new people. They'll all be trained and qualified, and they've had a lot of experience, and so on. And similarly, if you look, for example, at the 
the royal families, you know, the, like the, the king of England, you know, in their palace, in Buckingham Palace in England, they'll have servants and only qualified people will be able to go and serve the king. They won't just let any new person go in and take his breakfast or bring his lunch or whatever. But the people who do service, direct service, they will be very well trained and responsible people who've had a lot of experience and they know exactly how to do things. And so similarly with the Supreme Lord, you're going to worship the Supreme Lord, the personality of Godhead, you have to know that, that there's particular standard which is required in worshipping the Lord and to feel the presence of the Lord. You want to have the Lord present there to receive the worship. You have to meet the conditions. In other words, we should be pure and clean. So uh, it was mentioned this morning, you know, that you have to clean the teeth. In other words, purify the mouth. And then you have to bathe. Sometimes people don't even know. They think you bathe first and then you clean the teeth. You know, sometimes uh, they don't know that some people just don't know these things. But the, the, very, the, the process is you clean the mouth first and then you bathe. And so bathe, that's an important thing. Before you're, and the cloth also must be fresh. It should be clean. It should be laundered. It should be fresh freshly washed and that way then you can go and approach the Lord. You don't just go in your jeans, you know, and come in there and you didn't have a bath and, you, and you're going to go and worship the Supreme Lord. That is not the standard of deity worship. You know, it, it's actually offensive to approach the Lord in that kind of condition. So, uh, Lord Krishna is describing these different points to Uddhava and these points of course they are all practiced very strictly in temples where you know generally a proper temple where the Lord is worshipped you will see they have many rules and regulations and they have very high standard and, and that you can see for example temples like Jagannath Puri that if you're not born in the Hindu family, you can't even go in the temple. So they have conditions like that. That, I mean, that their purpose is also to protect the deity. Because they're always worried that intruders will come in. Because in the past, invaders did come in and they took the deity of Lord Jagannath away. And they had to bring the deity back. You know? So they don't want outside, they don't want that threat of outsiders coming in and taking the deity and ruin or destroying or damaging the deity worship. They want to keep the very high standard. So we have to understand the importance of these things in worshipping the deity. That the Lord is a person and uh, he, he, he does appreciate the efforts which the devotee will make to serve him. Now, Lord Krishna then mentions the different, different materials which may be used to make the deity. And he mentions wood, for example, Lord Jagannath is Dharumurti, the Lord in the form of wood. And the Lord can also be made, we have here our Gornitai deities are made in marble. And then the small Utsava deity is brass. So stone, metal, these things can be used for the deity. And it mentions here that sometimes people will also use sand. Now sand is, is described here, Jiva Goswami is quoted. The Jiva Goswami said that when the deity is made out of sand, that people are just having the deity for some time. They're not establishing a permanent worship. In other words, you know, just like we see when they have Durga Puja 
or Ganesh Puja or something, you know, they will often make the deity, they will make their murtis out of earth. They, uh, they use the clay, you know, and they make the, 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 the form of Durga or Kali Puja or like that, they, they have these things. And they'll, they'll make it from some earth. And they'll do the puja for some time, the Durga puja, maybe ten days or something, and then at the end of Durga puja, then they take the deity to the river or to the sea, and the the, it will go back to the earth. The elements will go back to the earth. And so they did some puja for some time. But the idea is that when you have a deity, that it, it should be eternal worship, that you're establishing the worship eternally. So when the deity is made from things like wood and metal and stone and so on, the deity will remain. And we see that there are deities around which have been there for a very, very long time. Just like uh, the deity at uh, Sri Rangam, Lord Rangana, the deity there is from a very long time ago. It's very, very, very ancient, very long ancient deity. And similarly also Balaji, Tirupati Balaji, it's a very old deity, very ancient. Then there are many deities like that in South India which have been worshipped for, for many, many, many years. They're going back. Some for it, oh, it, it is said there's also the deity of Lord Krishna at Udupi, and that deity of Lord Krishna at Udupi, Udupi is in Karnataka, a, a small small town. So there's a deity of Lord Krishna as a cowherd boy, and it is said that deity of Lord Krishna was originally worshipped by Lord Krishna's wife Rukmini that she would worship this deity of Lord Krishna as a cowherd boy. So later on that deity was found by Madhva Acharya. That Madhva Acharya had helped one ship which somehow had got stuck on a sandbank and he was able to help the captain to free the boat from the sandbank. And the captain was very grateful and he told Madhvacharya, if there's anything I can give you to help you, then please it will be my great pleasure to give you. So Madhvacharya then understood, he told the captain that, I know you have a block of Gopi Chandan there. They had a big block of Gopi Chandan, which was from Dwarka. Gopi Chandan, there's, there's a lot of Gopi Chandan over in Dwarka. So it was on the ship, there was a big lump of it on the ship. He said, can you give me that lump? Just give me that lump. So they gave it to Madhvacharya and Madhvacharya took the Gopi Chandan and he put it in the, in, the, in the water, in the sea there. And the Gopi Chandan melted off and within the Gopi Chandan there was this deity of Lord Krishna. So that deity was then established by Madhvacharya and the worship is going on. But it said the deity had been worshipped thousands of years before Madhvacharya in the time of Lord Krishna. It had been worshipped in Dwarka by Rukmini, the wife of Lord Krishna. So like that deity worship uh, doesn't stop. And traditionally in a family when they have uh, shaligrams and things like that, then they will give the shaligrams to their children. The ch the, particularly the eldest son has the responsibility to continue the worship. If the family are maintaining a temple, then when the father passes away, then the eldest son should take on that responsibility and continue to maintain the temple. So that is the, the, the tradition, that's the culture. The temple, it's not that the worship is stopped or the temple is closed, but the responsibility passes on to the younger generation. So similarly in the worship of the deity, uh, you can see some temples, uh, they've been around for a very, very long time. And of course the longer the temple is there, then the more famous they are and they attract more people, they get a reputation and people come 
many people come and of course then it means the temple gets more income and we see there are quite a few temples like that it is said there are many deities around the planet which are not known we don't know about them they're hidden in different places just like Madhavendra Puri Madhavendra Puri was at Govardhan and he had a dream and in his dream Lord Krishna appeared to him and Lord Krishna told him that please take me out of this place I'm very hot I'm, I want to be properly worshipped please take me out of this and Madhavendra Puri in his dream he understood that Lord Krishna was in the ground in Govardhan so he got some people to help him and they dug the ground and they found they brought out the form of Lord Krishna from the below in the earth in the ground there at Govardhan and that deity is worshipped today in a very gorgeous manner it's called Srinathji Srinathji is in Nathdwara which is on the edge of Rajasthan near to Gujarat so it's a very popular deity with the people from Pushtimark Pushtimark people they all go there and they worship Lord Krishna it's a form of Lord Krishna picking up the Govardhan hill and they've established many other temples of this uh, Srinathji in different places where the Gujarati community are you can go to Dubai you see they have a temple there you go to Bahrain they have a temple there you go to America they have some temples there in America and we've also put some temples with Srinathji we also worship Krishna it's a form of Lord Krishna and it was actually found by Madhavendra Puri and Madhavendra Puri is in our line of disciplic succession Madhavendra Puri was not Pushti Mark. Madhavendra Puri is a Godiya Vaishnava. And he found the deity. Later, after he found it, he gave it to Balaba Acharya's sons. Balaba Acharya was the Acharya for the Pushti Mark. And so he gave the deity to the sons of Balaba Acharya. Balaba Acharya had some very nice sons who were very good devotees. And Madhavendra Puri entrusted the worship to them that they would continue the worship and down to today the worship is continued the deity was initially at Govardhan later on because of the threats of the Muslim invaders they moved the deity to Nathdwara and Nathdwara was a palace there with a king who was a staunch Hindu and he took the deity in and he arranged for the worship of the deity there and similarly Jaipur they moved the deity from Vrindavan they moved Govindaji to Jaipur and they moved the deity of Gopinath and Damodar they all came to Jaipur to, to, to get protected because of the danger of the invasion so they wanted to protect the deities they moved them to Jaipur where the Jaipur king the Maharaj of Jaipur was a staunch devotee and the deity worship could be maintained there by the king and down to today the deity is still there so deity worship continues once you Prabhupada told us also once the temple is opened it cannot close and similarly once you begin the worship of the deity it cannot stop now somebody is worshipping the deity and the family are not interested what to do the family may not be devotees you may you may be in the unfortunate position you have no descendants to continue the worship so what are you going to do then you give the deity to some other devotee you entrust the worship to someone who will continue the worship sometimes what happens is they bring the deity to the temple and you can go to temples just like if you go to Radha Damodar temple in Vrindavan you will see they've got three sets of Radha and Krishna deities there 
in Radha Damodar temple, three sets of Radha and Krishna, big deities all there. They came from different people, like their temples, the worship couldn't be continued to put the deity there. Similarly, you go to uh, in Navadweep Dam, if you go to, what is it called, that place of Saranga Murari, Menak, uh, uh, what's the name of that place? I forget the name of the place where, Mara, Saranga Murari, where he has his place, Mamagachi, Mamagachi, there's a place Mamagachi and there's three sets of Krishna deities there also, you know, different times, the Vasudev Datta's deities are there, Saranga Murari's deity was the original deity, later on Vasudev Datta's deity is there and there's a, someone else then, I think it was Shivananda saying his deity also there. So different people, they put the, and you get many deities all in the one temple and you have all these Radha and Krishna deities. So that way one temple has to continue the worship. But, you know, it's better, you know, the some you establish the worship, you have to make arrangements for the worship to go on. Just like temples in India, when they have a temple, they have land also. And with that land, they have some income from the land. They can grow rice, or they give the land to other people and they grow the rice and then they'll give a portion of the rice to the temple. They'll take some for themselves but some of it will go to temple. They have to, the temple has to have some means of an income and the income would come from the land. And you, of course temple, you, they will have some cows because they want to get milk and they want cow dung and different things like that. And so they keep some cows there and they have to have some land for the cows. So all of these things are necessary for a, a, making a temple. You make a temple, establish a temple, there's a big responsibility to maintain the temple. Once the temple is opened, you have to continue it. And so, here in Hong Kong, very difficult. We don't have any land. Where are you going to get to get land in Hong Kong? Not very easy, of course. Now you have a little piece of land where you're trying to grow some vegetables, but you know it's not our land. You're just take, renting it from somebody. So uh, these are all things which have to be understood. People often very eager. Oh, I want the. I'm going to get a deity. I'm going to bring a deity. They don't always think about the responsibilities, about what's required, what you have to do. You bring the deity in. So sometimes the, the deities are buried. That's why, you know, just like uh, Lord Chaitanya was in Jagannath Puri and he brought out Tota Gopinath. It was buried in the sand at Jagannath Puri and Lord Chaitanya unearthed the deity from below the ground. And similarly, uh, there are several deities like that in Vrindavan. The, 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 the people, the, the people somehow to protect the deity, they will bury it in the ground. Maybe the Muslims are coming and they cannot take the deity away, so they'll just bury it in the ground and that way then cover it up and, and, and sometimes they put the deity into the lake as well, you know, and you put it into the cones which are there sometimes just to to hide them from people who may come to damage them. Or sometimes, you know, they just cannot maintain the worship, so they, they think in the future someone will find a deity and they can continue the worship. So there are many deities like that around the planet even, because the, the, the Lord was worshipped all over the planet. And so different places sometimes you can find, you find deities. And you, you can, when Madhavendra Puri found the deity, he began, he began to worship it, he made a temple. But often what they do nowadays when they find a deity, find a, do, a form of, they'll give it to the museum and they'll put it in the museum. And you can go to London, British Museum, you'll see they have things like that in the British Museum. Oh, this is a form of Krishna, it was found somewhere, you know. People find them and they sell them off. They don't want to, they don't think, oh, I'm so fortunate Krishna has appeared to me, I should worship it. They just simply think, 
no sell it and get some money. <laughs> they have this this conception. So Maharaj says in different cities in India you can go to antique shops and find a lot of old deities. Oh yeah, right, antique shops, yeah. They have the, the brass murtis, all these different brass murtis and you see there's deities there, many. And so some of them are, some of them are actually deities which have been worshipped before in the past for a long time. So it's unfortunate these things happen. But you know, you, you bring the deity, you, you, you should make a, a will so that the deity worship will continue, all right? You make a will, you have some money, you have some income and you should, and you should make a, if you make a request in your will that, that this deity worship will continue. And sometimes we had one man one time, he came in Malaysia it was, he, he was worshipping Radha and Krishna in his home. And so he got old and he got, it got difficult for him to do it. So he came to the temple, he said, I'm, I want to donate my deities to the temple, you can worship Radha and Krishna. He said, you don't have Radha and Krishna here, it was just a Jagannath temple. He said, I will give Radha and Krishna deities for the temple. So they said to him, okay, you want to give your deity to the temple, but can you give money for the garlands to be made every day? Can you give money for the dress? Can you give money for the jewelry? Can you pay for the offerings? No, he said, I'm giving the deity, you have to do all that. I'm just giving the deity, you take care of everything. <laughs> we said, well, and we said, that's not very fair. You know, you want us to do all the worship, you're only giving the deity, but there's so many expenses involved in worshipping the deity. You cannot just expect us to do everything. The reason why we don't have Radha and Krishna here is because we don't have a budget for everything. It's a big expense. You need people as well, not just money, you need people to do everything. And so it's a big challenge. There are many things to be thought about. So those are some things in relation to the deity worship. Are any question? Any comment? We know, we hear again and again, Harinam Sankirtan is to judge it for the age and such and such. Why then is deity worship uh, spoken about so much in our teaching also? It's important, we have to do it and, and such and such. Even though Harinam is, is said to be the Dharma, the Yuga Dharma. Yes. Well, we have to understand that deity worship will make sure that we keep our purity and our regulation. If we just do Harinam Sankirtan, it may not, it won't be so pure, it won't be so regulated. We won't worry so much about these things. But that's why deity worship is there, that it's a necessity for us to be pure and to keep a regulation bathing and what, changing the dress every day and washing the cloth and all of these things are essential, very important for us in worshipping the deity. So if we don't do this, if you're just doing Sankirtan, preaching is very good, yeah, it's, it's very important, it's a Yuga Dharma, but in order to keep us in, uh, in, to keep our purity, to keep our uh, cleanliness, our standards of cleanliness and so very important for us. The deity worship is there and the regulation which is there in the deity worship. Prabhupada was always very strict in the deity worship that it must be on time. And even people have complimented to me, they said, they, you know, they came to, they went to many different temples and often, you know, you, they have to wait 
15, 20 minutes to get darshan from the scheduled time, but you come to ISKCON, the ISKCON temple exactly on time, they will have the darshan. So punctuality is a very important factor in the temple. Not only cleanliness, but also being punctual. The deity greeting, the artis, everything must be on time. It must be regulated. This is, this is this how we can judge the standard of the deity worship. That, that everyone's very conscious and concerned. It's a challenge. It's not easy to keep up that punctuality, but it's required. It's required that we have to we have to have that standard. Otherwise, we we'll lose our Krishna consciousness. We're not Krishna, we're not being Krishna conscious if we're not being punctual and clean. Okay, anything else? Okay, Srila Prabhupada ki jai, Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai.